The goal of an equity analyst is to compute the intrinsic value of a stock. Most approaches to valuation are done on a relative basis. And this means taking the target company that you're trying to value and identifying similar companies. Similar companies have similar growth prospects, cash flows, investment opportunities, as well as risk. Also, similar companies tend to operate in the same industry. So let's talk about how to put this peer selection process into practice. And again, it's an inherent part, an essential part of the relative valuation that is so commonly done in the practice of valuation. Um, there are lots of approaches that you can use. Um, management often identifies competitors. Often you find uh, companies in the same industry group. But big providers of financial data will also do this as well. And that's the third bullet point you see here. I would like to talk about how to do this in Capital IQ and show you some approaches. So I'm going to go to uh, the Capital IQ home screen and go up to the search bar. And I'd like to talk about the gap. Now, we know the gap is um, a very common uh, apparel company. It's a retail company. They sell uh, denim t-shirts, khakis, other products. They've diversified into a number of uh, different brands. They've got Old Navy. In addition to Gap, they've also got Banana Republic, Athleta. So people know this company pretty well. But if you want to figure out what its peers are, of course you want to compare it to publicly traded peers because you only want to identify companies that are going to have information that is going to help you to value the gap. What you can do is go to this left hand side and scroll down and what you will see is quick comps under peer analysis. So you may have to, if this is a plus, you may have to uh, click it to expand it out. But I'm going to click on quick comps and what this does is it shows me the companies that Capital IQ thinks are comparable companies. And you've got Nordstrom, L Brands, Ross Stores, Burlington Stores, Tiffany. Um, let's see how many this is. It looks like 10 companies is listed here. And down at the bottom, you've got the gap here. So how comparable are these 10 companies to the gap? I would argue that a lot of these are not comparable. Um, Tiffany is obviously uh, uh, you know, in a much different class than The Gap. The Gap offers everyday products. People are not going to shop at Tiffany's on a regular basis, or at least I'm not, and I suspect most people are not. Their, their items are exclusive, very expensive, and uh, not going to be purchased on a regular basis for most people. Um, the Gap, in my opinion, doesn't compare very well to Nordstrom's or Macy's. Those are diversified department stores, and uh, they offer lots of products, shoes, men's and women's clothing, children's clothing. You know, the, uh, the selection there is much different than the Gap. I would also argue that uh, some of these are, you know, very different as well when you uh, try and compare it to some of these uh, brand management companies like PVH. L Brands includes... Um, things like Victoria's Secrets, as well as Bath and Body Works, I believe. So those are you know, very specialized uh, stores as opposed to The Gap, which has more general retail. So what I would encourage you to do, and again, I'm going to write out what my preference is here. I would prefer for you to select three to five peers. I mean, that to me is, in general, the best number to try and get at. So, you know, at the most, what I'm recommending is you select half of the ones that Capital IQ is listed here because Capital IQ is selected 10. Which ones would you select? Well, um, this is up to you to try and compare these companies, but I would, I would not select Nordstrom's. L Brands strikes me as one that is, um, you know, more comparable. Um, tapestry, I don't know, it's loosely um, comparable as well. And you might pick some of these other um, 
brand companies like uh, PVH. And again, I'm not saying these are the best, but um, those uh, tend to be ones that I would select. And so you can uh, add companies up here if you wanted to. You can delete some of these companies if you wanted to. But I would try and get it down to three to five peers. Um, and again, you may not even choose three. Maybe you're not going to be able to find um, only uh, only one company that's comparable. You really don't know. So what are we really trying to compare? Capital IQ gives you a lot of information here. And what I tend to focus on is these, these trading multiples. To me, they add the most value. And the reason why is because you can just take this initial look at how well it's valued relative to its peers. A very common metric is uh, the price to earnings. And so you see that in this column, it's got price to diluted EPS before the um, extraordinary last 12 months. I mean, this is a very complicated earnings measure, right? But it's telling you here that the gap trades at a multiple of about 10.8 times earnings. Um, you can see that relative to its peers, the peers trade at, uh, well, actually, this is, uh, yeah, this is giving you the statistics. It's basically the mean is 17. The median, the one in the middle, is 18.2. So, again, how do you interpret that? Well, I would compare this 10.8 to the mean or median and say, wow, you can buy a dollar's worth of corporate earnings from the gap at a price of only about 11, where, whereas its competitors, a dollar's worth of co corporate earnings cost a lot more. So the gap looks cheap, right? But this is ignoring a lot of information, I would argue. And um, what you have to do is go to the operating statistics to really learn more about this. So let's try and figure out why the gap trades at this discount. So let me just give you my initial conclusion. My initial conclusion Gap is attractively priced relative to peers. But again, what you want to do is try and answer this question of why it might be. And so then you can compare these operating statistics. Maybe it deserves to be trading at a discount relative to its peers. For example, if you just look at the gross margin, the Gap has a gross margin of 38.5%. Tiffany's has 63. Tapestry um, has 66. So actually, I would argue that Tapestry is not a good comparison to the Gap because it's got a gross margin almost twice the Gap. Um, what about growth opportunities? What are analysts expecting in terms of growth opportunities? So you can see that you've got historical growth here. Um, over one year period, the Gap um, had revenue growth of about 8%. Tiffany's had higher, Tapestry had 26%, uh, you know, the highest in one year revenue growth here. So, you know, if, the t if Tapestry can continue to grow revenues at that rate, it deserves to trade at a higher multiple relative to current earnings because the future earnings are going to grow. So you have a variety of things here that you can look at, and you can even add more items, but I often like to look at this uh, net income margin, the gross margin as well, revenue growth historically, and um, you know this tells you a lot about what's actually going on with the company and whether it really deserves to trade at a premium or a discount. So um, these quick comps are, are really good. I want to argue that there's another way to do this as well. So let me show you very quickly. If you go to the uh, Capital IQ plugin for Excel, you can go to templates and what you can do is find um, under equity comparables the detailed comps, which I think is a great template in here. And the value of this is that it's going to download a lot of data for you very quickly. 
and this is the one that I really recommend that you you download and share with uh, other people if you're doing a group analysis of this so it's downloading information for IBM right now let me blow this up a little bit I'm going to change this to GPS, which is the symbol for gap, and it's going to start downloading the data for the gap. It's going to pull in the peers. See, it's got Nordstrom, L Brands, Macy's, Tapestry in there as well. But the beauty about this is if you go down to these comparable companies, it's got all the data for Nordstrom's right here. It's going to have all the data for L Brands and Ross Stores is that third one that is uh, a competitor and you can see it right here. If you want to exclude some of these from your analysis you can just change this Y to an N and it's going to take it out. So it's really great and what it will do is it will show you some great valuation ratios here. For example it will give you the uh, earnings per share the PE ratio for the last fiscal year, last 12 months, next fiscal year, two fiscal years out. And this is for the company that you're trying to value, which in this case is the gap. And it will also show you, if you go over here, the median and the average for those competitors that you selected. So you can instantly make this comparison, take out, com take out peers, and then compare them to this, um, the median and the average, which you can see are in Y and AA over here. So if somebody doesn't have the uh, Excel plugin for Capital IQ, what you can do is you can share this with them by you know, just copying these. And all I did was I selected the entire worksheet. I press Control C. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste these in. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to paste it as a value, sorry. I'm going to paste this in as a value, which is right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to convert all these formulas to values. And then you don't have to have the plugin installed to actually access the data. So it makes it easier for other people to do it. So this is just a really great way to do this comparable company analysis. You put in the ticker and it will download lots of, lots of information there for you to implement your valuation. So I hope you find this useful. This is... Um, really great way to get information on peers.